This is Sarah Mack and welcome to Creative Magic Club. Together, we'll discover inspirational stories of creative entrepreneurs living out their dreams, doing the work they are most passionate about and building wealth in magical and fun ways. While building a six-figure income as a writer and coach, helping other women to launch their dream businesses, I've connected with so many incredible people and seen it proven again and again that you can thrive financially doing whatever it is you are passionate about. I am here to share life-changing strategies for mindset, making money, and reaching more people with your work in a business and life filled with creativity, freedom, and fun. Welcome. I am so excited to introduce my special guest today. We have with us Morgan Faulkner, who is a social worker and clinical therapist specializing in trauma recovery through the lenses of narrative therapy, self-compassion, and parts work. Hi, Morgan. Hi. So I'm really excited about the conversation that we're going to have today. And I'm going to tell, like, give everybody some background as to like how this evolved. Firstly, Morgan was a client in Freedom Club. And so I got to know her work, obviously, through what she shared with me. And then when I started writing my book and, you know, trauma, like my trauma recovery journey has been such a like central piece to my story of transformation in my relationship with money. And that's really like the focus of the book. And because I'm not a therapist, I'm not trauma trained, I was like, oh, I need to get some like professional expertise input on on what I'm talking about. So I started to interview therapists, which has honestly been one of the most interesting things I have ever done in my whole life. Mm-hmm. Like I've mm-hmm. spoke, I, I've worked with, I'm working with a lot of different therapists, but actually like, you know, getting to see, like pick the brains of somebody mm-hmm. who's doing this work and, and mm-hmm. kind of gave me more of an insight into a lot of the common patterns, which mm-hmm. I just think is like so interesting and like I know is completely life changing. So mm-hmm. I'm really excited for you to introduce you to Morgan. And like we had such an interesting interview that I was like, we need to bring this to the podcast. So, um, okay, where to start? I think I think the thing that was most interesting to me, Morgan, about what you shared in our conversation was, um, well, the question that I have been bringing is like, I see money as something that we're in relationship with, right? Like most Mm -hmm. people talk to therapists about what's causing them pain in life. And usually it's Mm -hmm. relationships. Like that's Mm -hmm. like the number one thing that we Mm -hmm. usually have the most pain around or are complaining about the most from day to day. Usually Mm -hmm. like family, people who are closest to us, whoever's triggering us. And I'm like, money is one of those relationships where, you know, if like family is annoying you, you can go somewhere else or like not call Mm -hmm. them. But money, we're in relationship every single day. And, um, And so I was asking Morgan about just like emotional dysfunction and how that shows up in our relationship with money and obviously in relationship with anybody when we're triggered. And one of the patterns that you shared with me was around this feeling that like the other shoe is gonna drop. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so connected to money, particularly in entrepreneurship, where there's just like this ongoing fear that like there's never gonna be enough. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, if we've struggled with things in the past because we didn't have the skills around it, or, you know, we've had like a dysfunctional relationship with it that like lack of self-trust that Mm -hmm. things can kind of get better without Mm -hmm. it getting worse again. So can Mm -hmm. you just sort of give like a bit of background on like why that is connected to trauma, why that is a trauma pattern and like Mm -hmm. some of the ways that that we experience that? Yeah. So there's a couple of things that come to mind. One thing that it feels really like pressing to share right off the top is that even as we're sitting here and talking about this, which I love talking about, which always sounds weird, I love talking about trauma, right? So it's kind of a strange thing to say, but um, but even as we're sitting here talking about this, I'm having flashes of all of the people in my head who are going to judge me for this, like who are going to watch this, hopefully 
12 billion people watch this podcast and it's helpful, right? But all the people who are going to evaluate me and judge what I'm saying. Um, so that's something that I have gotten used to that comes up when there's like a little bit of nervousness or whatever, right? Because I care about this. I care about you. Um, so if it's something that matters to us, such as a relationship, such as a relationship with money, all of these sort of, um, they feel like, like a wah, like this thing that comes in from the outside, right? This thing, this sensation that says there's something larger than us that has the power to determine whether we are good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, whatever the enoughness, right? Um, and this is part of that ingrained, I think this is what you're asking, part of that ingrained trauma response. Um, trauma says there's always some, there's something outside of me that always has the power no matter what I do to just, can I say a bad word on the podcast? You can say whatever you like. Okay, great. So something has the power to like, just fucking destroy me and not just destroy me to in a livable sense. Like I can live without an arm or a leg. Like it will turn me to dust and it, I will just blow away with the breeze. No one will ever know I was here. No one will ever know I existed. Um, and that will be the end of me. So um so does that answer the very first part of the question like yes yeah, what so, was that thing yeah so and obviously this is connected to trauma if you because you've been in that situation if you've been in that type of situation mm -hmm. sometime mm -hmm. in your life where you didn't have mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. to do what you yeah. want you didn't have the power yeah. to create safety you didn't have the power to be like oh i want to get out of this and then to mm -hmm. actually be able to get out of that mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. created you know, it's like a pattern and mm -hmm. a programming of like, I'm mm -hmm. not capable. Like Correct. if I want something, I'm not capable. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like, so obviously mm -hmm. then we're trying to protect ourselves from mm -hmm. potentially being in harm's mm -hmm. way again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, that, that like protective mm -hmm. pattern is constantly yeah. coming up and protecting yeah. us from yeah. things that maybe we don't actually like need to be protected from. Yeah. So this, I'm so glad you're saying protection because that's, this has been a, an added sort of thing that I've been working with just in the last couple of years, maybe is, is the notion that this big thing that blows up that says this thing, cause when we're little, like a lot, you know, a lot of this chronic, chronic patterns of trauma or complex trauma, complex PTX, PTSD um, develops when we're younger, right. Which gives it the time to become really complicated as we go through our life. So I went through a lot of um, many years of sexual trauma when I was little and nobody knew and it wasn't anybody's fault necessarily that they didn't know. Um, but what that taught me and reinforced, especially at the age um, prior to six is when we're really developing our personality, right? So at that age where everything is like a sponge, what I'm being taught is literally to be under, right? To be flattened, to let things happen to me. And that's the experience. And yes, I'm also learning that um, there's no, the adults are not protecting me. Again, maybe through no fault of their own. But if the adults are not protecting me, then actually it must mean, even though it feels weird and gross and scary, it must mean that that's what's supposed to be happening. Because the adults are letting it happen. So, even, so what we normalize internally in our nervous system normalizes the sensation of things feeling gross, bad, yucky, overwhelming, and terrifying. And nobody's going to help us. Nobody knows. And that's how it's supposed to be. Right. So if we, it's like really intense, but if we take that just like any other habit or any other habitual way of thinking, it's really hard to break it's hard to stop smoking. It's hard to stop drinking, whatever, right? It's hard to break a habit. And if this is your habit, this is your habitual way of being in the world, um, then to step outside of that and possibly find out, um, I, I think what's the scariest part is that to step outside of that and, oh my God, what if it turns out, what if it turns out that was right? What if it turns out that that was right? What if I get over it, I get through the hump and I start sharing and I start talking to people and asking for support and it turns out, no, no, you were supposed to be that piece of shit. That was your purpose, right? So what if it turns out I was right? And then maybe even conversely, um, what if it turns out I was wrong? 
And then I have to deal with the fact that I have spent, for me, 35 years suffering under the weight of this belief. Um, my own therapist, Julie, says, don't waste your suffering, right? So how do I deal with confronting the fact that I may have wasted 35 years of suffering? Yeah, okay. There's a lot of things I want to... Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. number one, like obviously mm-hmm. one of the main issues is like the shame around mm-hmm. it and the fact that it's not talked about. So we don't know. We don't have enough information right. Right. a lot of the time to be like, is this right or is mm-hmm. this wrong? Mm-hmm. And um, similarly to money, mm-hmm. um, when something isn't talked about, we don't have information about it. So it's difficult to make those internal decisions when you've been mm-hmm. wired to like not trust your mm-hmm. natural reactions because mm-hmm. um, because you weren't able to to see proof that how mm-hmm. you felt was right, was, right. You know, was good or bad. Right. Right. Um, and yeah and also like the around the the oh yeah that's what i wanted to say about the like reconditioning your nervous system so this mm-hmm. is like a very common mm-hmm. thread it was for me mm-hmm. it's like most of the clients that i work with it's like mm-hmm. we have to retrain ourselves to feel safe like mm-hmm. being safe and mm-hmm. relaxing and mm-hmm. feeling joy and pleasure because when the nervous system has been in like yeah cptsd PTSD, mm-hmm. like panic, avoidance, mm-hmm. overwhelm, like you say, like it's normalized this situation mm-hmm. and obviously recreated that situation over and over again in life and mm-hmm. built evidence that like, oh, this is normal mm-hmm. and our nervous system is like, oh, this is safe. Mm-hmm. So it can actually be very confronting and uncomfortable to mm-hmm. put ourselves into safety and to put mm-hmm. ourselves into calm and mm-hmm. security. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually like a retraining process mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. can kick up a lot of resistance because it's just mm-hmm. change. Yeah. And so the, you know, to speak to the complexity, like for me, um, that pattern of overwhelm and that um, pattern of feeling like I wasn't capable and I wouldn't, mm-hmm. wasn't good enough, that mm-hmm. was really triggered for me in relationship to money. And I know this is mm-hmm. like a common thing mm-hmm. for a lot of people that I've worked with and spoken to mm-hmm. is, you know, obviously culturally we don't have that much financial education like we mm-hmm. haven't had. And, um, you know, it, it, it is complex. And when you mm-hmm. don't have habits to support the production and like management of money, it mm-hmm. can become very overwhelming and threatening to mm-hmm. our safety mm-hmm. and well being mm-hmm. and security. Mm-hmm. So that became a container t- for me to trigger all of those feelings of like, I'm not capable, I'm stuck, I'm overwhelmed. And that would literally be my emotional reaction to when I sat mm-hmm. down with a spreadsheet to try, you know, when I wanted to ask for more money and when I started making moves in my business mm-hmm. to actually create more wealth and security, mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. were the like dysfunctional emotional responses that were happening for me that mm-hmm. really caused me to look at what is mm-hmm. the root of these feelings that I'm having. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and like continuing to really commit to my relationship with money was the thing that allowed me to start to rewrite those um those emotional responses. We'll get back to the episode in a moment, but first I wanna tell you how I went from wondering if anyone would ever pay me thousands of dollars for my support with mindset coaching to consistently signing dream clients, paying me prices like 3K, 10K, 15K and more. Learning how to tell my story online is what has made the biggest difference and has led me to making six figures, working with clients I adore, while traveling to 18 different countries, writing a book, and recording songs for an album. Freedom Club is my year-long mastermind where I teach you how to do it too. By mastering six-figure storytelling and a simple content strategy, I went from hearing no at the end of every sales call to signing five-figure dream clients in my DMs with ease. And from a zero dollar launch to consistently signing soulmate clients every month organically through social media. I went from undercharging, overworking and overthinking my prices to receiving a thousand dollars to five figures for my coaching programs and creating so much freedom to rest, play, create and adventure in my dream life and business. Freedom Club is now open for enrollment. It's high touch daily support for you and your business. 
with a one-on-one -on -one kickoff call to get crystal clear on exactly how to attract the perfect fit clients into your high ticket offer through your storytelling. You also get daily access to tailored support in our group Voxer chat, where you'll feel supported, seen, and inspired by our intimate community of heart-centered creative entrepreneurs. Plus, Twice each month, you'll have hot seat coaching with me in our group coaching calls to dive deep into content edits, mindset shifts, energy management habits, launch strategy, or any back-end business support you need. And you'll have VIP access to my extensive training vault on everything you need to run a six-figure coaching business, from content and social media strategy, to money mindset, sales trainings, and lean team building plus free access to any live programs or masterclasses I run throughout the year. This is the long-term foundational support to take your dream coaching business to six figures. Now you know you're ready to help more people with your incredible work by focusing on high ticket sales. You can apply today at withsaramack.com forward slash freedom club. Um, I'm curious, like what you know, what's it been like for you and your relationship with money? What mm -hmm. other patterns have you seen in clients mm -hmm. around relationship with money? I know you mm -hmm. like a lot of therapists I've spoken to said they don't explicitly talk about money that much, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. curious, like what you have to add to that. Yeah. So, well, no, I don't explicitly talk about money a lot, although it does come up in conversation and thanks to you, I am way more comfortable now just putting it on the table, being like, this is a thing in life. And it's okay to talk about it, right? How you feel about this? Is this serving you? Because we have to look at a lot of times, like, are your basic needs even getting met? Hard, it's hard to get out of crisis, right? Or hard to do a lot of deep dive into the trauma work if our basic needs are totally fucked. So, um, so no, it, it, so with that being said, it's not often directly into the money in the way that you do that deep dive. But um, we do talk a lot about like job stuff will come up all the time. And um the, the ways that people will allow themselves to be treated in a work environment that they would, what we find when we do the parallel, that they would never allow themselves to be treated in an intimate relationship, right? So we say, well, you have a relationship with work, just like you have relationships with other people and other things in your life. So if, you're, if your work was a partner, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or whomever, how would you feel about this relationship, right? And people will go, oh, mm -hmm. And it's a sort of a different discovery. And so, and one of the things that keeps people stuck oftentimes in really toxic work environments is finance and it's fear of financial insecurity, right? Fear that I won't be able to go be an entrepreneur. I won't be able to find the job that pays me what I want to pay. And so it all roots back in to the work that you have done, the work that you do, the work that I've done with you um, and that financial conversation. So is definitely in there. Um, and you said something else, um, exam looking at all those beliefs, right? What are the beliefs that keep you stuck? And you use the word dysfunctional, which I love to look at the difference between what's dysfunctional and what is maladaptive. Mm -hmm. Because your, your belief, those core beliefs that you've had to work with, my core beliefs that I had to work with, my beliefs were hugely functional right? But the function that they were serving was so maladaptive. It was not what I wanted in my life. And so sometimes, uh, you know, for, for whoever this is helpful for, right? If you're struggling with this, we miss out on the fact that our brain, like our system, ideally, it's actually working for us, even when it feels like it's working against us. So these things that I have, that I feel are dysfunctional, actually it's because my brain is so smart my body is so smart that it has done this wire this really convoluted wiring that's going to allow me to believe these things that i know i don't really believe but it's going to allow me and and reinforce these things that it thinks are keeping me safe because it just wants to keep me safe it just wants to keep me safe over and over and over again so if we could shift into like this almost this place of gratitude for this part of ourself that is reinforcing this thing even if it feels dysfunctional um if we can shift into a place of gratitude for the part that's really working overtime to keep me safe then we can go oh <laughs> look how good i am at convincing myself of this thing that isn't true i wonder how good i might be at convincing myself something 
that actually is true. And that actually is helpful for me as I move forward and in whatever space that I'm in. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I love that shift in mm-hmm. perspective of just like mm-hmm. your passion mm-hmm. for yourself. Because yeah, I mm-hmm. know I've been so hard on myself for, you know, financial yeah. things mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. struggles mm-hmm. and um, yeah. And like, I didn't even know, you know, that I had mm-hmm. had sexual trauma until I started working on my money and started. Isn't that interesting? Plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting. Um, yeah, because it was the the triggers that were happening in my relationship with money that really forced mm-hmm. me to look at like what is the belief, right. and then mm-hmm. being like, where did this where did that come from, from? Yeah. and why mm-hmm. does this keep coming up as if it's like mm-hmm. a life or death situation for me? Yes. Yeah. And so yeah, it's like, and then the money mindset work is literally that. It's mm-hmm. like plugging in a new program into your brain mm-hmm. and being like, okay, mm-hmm. cool brain, like you've you've assessed over, like mm-hmm. from the past that maybe I'm not mm-hmm. capable of keeping myself safe and mm-hmm. maybe life is really fucking overwhelming mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and we should hide because mm-hmm. it's terrifying to mm-hmm. be like okay let's put mm-hmm. the new program in mm-hmm. and start to create evidence around the fact that mm-hmm. I am capable mm-hmm. it is safe mm-hmm. um, and you know I'm worthy and deserving of good things and mm-hmm. good things are possible and maybe even perhaps easy yeah oh that was so hard mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah when we start to put that that mm-hmm. new program in and then mm-hmm. yeah like taking steps from that place like really mm-hmm. like moving the shit bringing that intentional action to start to build evidence so our brain mm-hmm. can start to relax and be like oh okay like this is true mm-hmm. we have some more evidence around these mm-hmm. things now so i'm more likely mm-hmm. to allow you to take steps further into this realm of living mm-hmm without having an emotional breakdown or like nervous mm-hmm. system being like meh, meh, meh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and I remember that something you kept saying when we were mm-hmm. working together was like you were uh-huh. kind of surprised at how you were like I'm doing this work on my money but it's causing me to look at every single other area <laughs> of my life you kept on coming to me like you mm-hmm. sure this is like <laughs> gonna help me Uh and then you were like whoa Uh so I'd love for you to just like kind of share your your perspective on you know money mindset work and like what you thought it wasn't and how it's helped you Mm. yeah so well okay so this is what like keeps like shouting wants to come out so when we were working together. I was work doing a program with you and and simultaneously doing another program, a different kind of program with a with a friend of ours um collectively that you and I both know. And um and um so it was like, you know, shit was just coming from like all angles, right? The self work. And I had been at a job, which if you may remember, was working as a middle school social worker for like 10 weeks and oh my God, I just like all, it was like I was on fire, um, not in a good way, right? Um, and got very, very sick. And my body was like, you cannot go back there. So I left from that position and they were very kind and very understanding. Um, and this is as kids are coming back to school after being in, in COVID lockdown. And so I am I had gone through a pretty gnarly breakup, separation from somebody. I had moved into my own house in a different city had taken this job, had left the job, had a handful of private clients, was sending out way more money than was coming in. It was like just, I mean, I have never, ever made it never happen again, right? Unless it's, no, I'm not even going to go there, right? So um, had never been so broken my entire life. And it was, my nervous system was just a wreck all of the time, which as I say that, I'm like, oh, that probably had to do with it. My nervous system was so jacked from everything I had been through, right? Which I know now. Um, and so I remember vividly, I will never forget this, walking my dog one day and I was supposed to have dinner with a friend that night. And um, I had gone over to my friend's house, you know, like uh, two weeks before, um, And they had cooked that person something like it was my turn to make dinner basically right and um i had like 
I had no, no, I mean, I think seven, seven, maybe $12, 12, between 12 and $17 to my name in that moment. And, um, frozen chicken, I guess, maybe in the freezer, there was like old frozen chicken. And I had like a bunch of vegetables that were definitely about to expire and, um, peaches that were pears that were about to go bad. And I happened to have like a thing of whipping cream from Trader Joe's and I was walking and um, just unbelievably panic stricken about the fact that I had no money. I was not going to be able to afford to buy any groceries to cook for this person. And I w it was kind of like the moment of like total surrender. I was like, this is it. You win world. Like you win. I'm a piece of shit. I am totally beaten. There's no, I can't, it's like sucking blood from a stone. There's nowhere I can go to fix this. What the fuck do I do? So I can call and cancel. I can own up to it. What do I do? And that was the moment I was like, okay, I have frozen chicken. Oh, and I have those vegetables and we can chop them up. Oh, and I have those pears and I'll make baked pears for dessert. Oh, and I have that random bottle of wine from like two months ago in my fridge that I never drank because it looked gross, but at least I can show up with something. And so I ha I didn't have to spend any of my $17. I went home, I got all of my groceries. I went over to my friend's house. We made a delicious dinner. They were none the wiser. And it was this like, oh my God, this isn't real. This veil or this curtain of you worthless, crappy, miserable, undeserving, how shameful you should be so embarrassed, all this, and, and I have the power to ruin your life. I was like, that's not, it's not real. It, I like walked right up to the cliff and realized that it wasn't a, like, it wasn't a cliff. You know what I mean? It was just another step. And I, it may, maybe it sounds like small, you know, cause it's like, it's just dinner and at least you had $17. Right. But for me, it was, it was, it was totally coming face to face with, I feel like I have, I'm completely out resourced. I am outnumbered. I have no bullets left in my gun. I surrender. And in that, mo I'm, and take me, right? Take me now. And in that moment, I was like, oh, actually, that's not true. Actually, I have all of these things that I need to make dinner. It's a great metaphor, right? I have all the resources I need. They're already in my fridge. And I'm just going to, so, so I'm going to do that. And I didn't die. <laughs> and it was a wonderful evening. Um, and the food was actually very good. And I just, I will never forget it. I will never forget it because it was so apparent to me in that moment that that thing that I had determined that was going to destroy me was a total fucking lie. Um, it was just a lie. And it felt very real, but it was just a lie. And I think that it was kind of like coming around a curve at that point and moving towards I can still, I can feel it. Like, and that feeling doesn't, that feeling is going to come back on me all. I mean, it comes back to me all of the time, but my capacity now to go, Oh, there it is. That's fear. Thank you. Fear. I hear that you're trying to protect me and like buckle in. Cause we're going to go do this thing. Um, that was just such a massive shift because you was, and you'd say this in programming all the time, right? Like it's, it's all about the money, but it's not about not about the money at all. It's like totally about the money and it's totally not about the money. Right. Like, it, yeah. So you identified the thought patterns that you'd basically mm -hmm. been buying into. Mm-hmm. hundred percent buying into. And acting on yeah. and using as like a filter to make decisions in your life. Mm -hmm. And the money mindset work brings the new programming. Mm-hmm. And then you start to, yeah, like move through that new programming mm -hmm. and see it's like the doors open on the other side. And like you say, yeah, everything's already in the fridge. Yeah. And, and that's, it's like the, the choices are always there. And so mm -hmm. it's like a reconditioning and, mm -hmm. uh, um, just repeat, repeat, repeat to build mm -hmm. the, 
it's like mm-hmm. what's that um native american saying where it's like we each have two wolves within us which like we're gonna the, feed yeah which mm-hmm. we which wolf are you gonna feed the one that you feed will become the strongest mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. you start taking action in faith mm-hmm. in that new direction and mm-hmm. um like please tell us the happy ending to the story <laughs> <I'm the good laughs> <meal. laughs> now i eat every night um the happy ending of the story is that well i'll just tell you where i am now well the um, so not super long after that time which felt fucking endless um not super long after that point in time it was actually while we were still working together so um, I took, ended up taking a job in Santa Fe, which moved me out of where I was living. Um, and follow your intuition because it's always right. Um, I was offered this job, or this job was presented to me. And I, I, my first response was like, oh, fuck, I know I'm going to take it. Now I have to move again. And I did. And I worked a lot at that job. And then while I was there, I started picking up um, more private clients on the side. My parents were gracious enough to welcome me into their home again. Um, so... I did all the things that I probably still had a lot of judgment around. Um, I lived with my parents, which not everybody has. I mean, I'm hugely fortunate. Not everybody has the opportunity to do that. But um, I put myself in a position where I didn't have a lot of outward expenditures. I worked my dick off for like six months. Um, and at the end of six months, I had $20,000 in my bank account, which I've never had. I mean, that was six months before that I was as broke as I'd ever been. That I'm hearing myself and I'm like, it's like one of those like bullshit, you know, like success stories for the, for the infomercials, but that is true. Um, and, and that number has vacillated now a bit because now I'm learning a new relationship with what it is to have money and like what you're allowed to do with that and things that feel good and things that don't feel good. Um, so that was almost that moment. Uh, $20,000 moment was almost a year ago. Now I have my own office in Santa Fe. I have a really um, full, as full as I want it to be, um, private practice. Um, I have other challenges in my life, but I consistently remember, I'm like, wow, it's really different to deal with this challenge when I know that I can support myself as I'm moving through it. That's a whole, and I think that that's probably the happy ending. Um, <laughs> that I don't worry about money. Yeah. I still, I mean, we all, you know, it's like. Yeah, there's always going to be another level. Always going to be another level. Yes. But, but that's a um, huge jump. Massive. And you're doing incredible work that's with the cool. clients that you want to, that you yeah. want to work with. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. I'm so happy. And, mm. and I love this story about the, the dinner. Like I always joke about this. It's like, mm-hmm. I feel also um, like I have reoccurring nightmares about running out of food. And I know my grandmother oh, did the war mm-hmm. in Germany. Mm-hmm. And she always, you know, she had like a, a thing where she, you yep. had to clear your plates. Yes. She would tell us all these stories about like, we all we had to eat was crusts, mm-hmm. you know, like we just like hear these stories over and over at dinner time. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's, you know, it's like a, it's epigenetics, right? Where you yeah. inherit mm-hmm. um, trauma mm-hmm. from other lineages. And mm-hmm. so it's like a reoccurring fear of mine to run out of food. And mm-hmm. so I always have more food than I need. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I always think I've run out of food when there's actually like an incredible meal left like it's it's always when you think you've got nothing mm-hmm. left yes. to eat you're yes. like i didn't yes. get groceries we're not gonna yes. have anything to eat oh it's yes. gonna be awful and then you go yes. home and you just like pull something together yes. with like yes. yeah those random vegetables at the back of the fridge that you thought yes. you had, and you're like this is yes. like the best meal i've cooked yes. all yes. week and it happens all the time it's abundant yes. yeah it is and it's a different perspective. It's not what we think. Who Marianne Williamson says um, a miracle is just a shift in perspective, and that's that's all. That's what that. I mean, to me, that's what I hear, and that's what that was. Just that shift in, in perspective. Yeah, that's it. What a beautiful mm-hmm. um, fable that you have shared with mm-hmm. us. And mm-hmm. yeah, 
I know we could talk for hours and hours and hours and mm-hmm. there's like so much <laughs> more wealth that you have to share. Maybe we'll have to have mm. you back on to continue the conversation. Yeah, um, but I'm going to wrap it up for today. So mm-hmm. thank you for coming mm-hmm. and sharing your wisdom and your stories with us. Can you um, please tell everybody who's interested in finding out more about you and your work? What have you got going on? Where can people find you? Yes. So I do have um, a website. It's in- integrated, I-N-T-E-G-R-A-T-E-D, into, into integrate, um, integrated mental health NM, like New Mexico, integrated mental health NM.com. Um, I'm in Santa Fe. I see a lot of people. Um, I still probably have 90% of my clients are remote, even the ones who are local. Um, so they do a lot of remote work. I do have an office, like I said, here in Santa Fe. Um, I have clients in various places throughout the country now. So, um, and actually as of recently, some international, I mean, just people who are traveling. So, um, so I think um, people say, who do you work with? And I usually say everyone, but I will say that that most of the people who find their way to me, whether they're coming, where whether it's um, like overt or not, there's trauma somewhere in either in their life and their lineage and their spiritual lineage. Um, it's in there. That that tends to be who ends up in this space. Awesome. Um, Definitely yeah. go check out Morgan's work and please send her and recommend her to anybody who you know needs a good therapist. Yeah. And thank you so much and thank you everybody for watching. Please share this episode with anybody who you know could benefit and we'll see you next time. Bye. Cool. Thank you. To my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting and subscribing.